We hear net zero in the news all the time, but what does it really mean? Let's start with the big picture. Carbon dioxide naturally moves from the atmosphere to living organisms and vice versa. This is known as the carbon cycle. It involves sources which emit carbon and carbon sinks, anything which absorbs more carbon than it releases, like the ocean, trees, soil, or even human-engineered solutions like direct air capture plants. The system has always naturally balanced itself out, but human intervention is throwing a wrench in the cycle. Our activity has created an imbalance between the amount of greenhouse gases released into the atmosphere and the amount of carbon that can be absorbed by our natural sinks. The result? a net accumulation of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere, which is warming our planet and driving anthropogenic climate change. To stop this warming, we need to reach a balance between our emission sources and removals, aka net zero emissions. And in practical terms, for governments and companies, this means reducing our greenhouse gas emissions to as close as zero as possible and to create additional carbon sinks to remove any residual emissions. Credible company net zero commitments should align to the Science-Based Targets Initiative's latest standard, which involves reducing emissions across the value chain by 90 to 95%, with a mix of short and long-term strategies that align with limiting global warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius. Carbon removal should only apply to residual greenhouse gas emissions. In other words, those that are not technically or economically feasible to reduce. As technology continues to improve, the goalposts for what is considered residual will be ever-changing. And if your company wants to get started, it's important to begin with measuring your carbon footprint holistically first, all of those scopes one to three and climate mitigation investments outside of the value chain, also known as carbon offsetting, are a crucial tool to extend your climate leadership. But these should only be made in addition to deep emission reductions, not instead of them. We are at a critical time in needing to restore the Earth's delicately balanced carbon cycle. And to avoid the worst effects of climate change, greenhouse gas emissions need to be roughly cut in half within the next eight years if we have any chance of limiting global warming to 1.5 degrees and eventually reach that state that we call net zero. Many countries are working towards a net zero 2050 target. And while government targets are important, this race to zero needs to involve every economy, every company, and every individual to radically reimagine our way of doing things. Kick off your climate action strategy today. Join us on the race to net zero.